Hey guys, so we are here talking about how to start your hair business and um, the different things you should look for as a buyer, even as a consumer. You know, it's all about being informed when you are buying and wearing hair products so that you know what's going on and, you know... No one is really going to give you this information all together. So here you are. You're welcome. Okay, so this video, we are now going to talk about hair quality, hair grades, hair grades, hair grades, hair grades. Anytime somebody asks me um, what the hair grade of the hair is, that's my number one sign that they may not be so informed as a consumer of hair and... For many factory owners and many hair vendors, cha-ching, that money sign goes off because at this point, I can tell you anything um, based on this hair grade and you'll probably buy it because you heard somewhere that 10A was the best and 7A was the worst. Now, let's dispel all the myths, all the rumors, Okay. Yes, hair needs to be classified, qualified. So it's not a falsity to give your hair a hair grade, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 6, A, 6, double A, 6, triple A. However, in the whole industry, there is no standard for your hair grades. So what is 6, A at my company may not be 6, A at Johnny's company. What is 10A at my company may not be 10A at Brenda's company. Everybody has their own grade scale. So what you need to be asking is, is the hair low level, mid level, or high level? Usually companies will have these three levels of hair. And then once you get there, these can be called 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10. So again, like there's nothing wrong with with classifying because obviously you need to be able to easily identify which hair but you should be asking what are the qualities behind these classifications why is this your low versus your mid versus your high okay so rule of thumb um, if you go to hair by Connie right now you will see that my grades are six seven and eight um, I usually only source hair that is of highest quality. That's what I wear. I, I like to wear my hair for a long time. So starting off, the quality of my hair, my lower level hair is going to be really good. My mid-level hair is going to be better. And my high-level hair is going to be best. Not because all of the hair cannot be worn and do different things, but... If you watched my old video, now you learned about being a single donor versus a, a um, single donor hair or double drawn hair, some of my categories are going to come fall into that level. So this is going to be high grade, be higher grade because it is coming from one person. It's not just multiple hair; it's put together. Um, or this hair is double drawn hair, so it's it's put in a way that there are no short hairs. So I always give the description about my hair on the links. So you can click on any product and, you know, see who it comes from, how it's processed, everything. Okay, so what are the characteristics of hair? What are these questions that you should be asking? Okay, now usually low quality hair um, or the low level quality hair is sometimes just human hair. You know, it didn't come from one donor. Um, it probably just came from multiple donors and it's just hair that was collected. Maybe after the excess was done, they went through this hair, sifted it again. Okay, this hair is still good hair. We're not gonna waste it. We're going to bundle it together. Boom, this is just human hair. So maybe they machine remedied it and it is flowing in one direction. Maybe they didn't. Just human hair. Now, um, mid-level hair. Mid-level hair is probably not going to be just hair that's collected and put together. It will be or may be Remy hair 
or machine Remy hair that's supposed to flow. And maybe the high grade hair is the hair that came from one single donor. Or maybe when we talk about colors, blonde hair, for instance, um, is usually a high level hair, especially like 613, because a lot of people are buying the blonde to wear, but they're also buying the blonde to color it and dye it. So if you get some hair that has not been processed before, usually it can be bleached to 613 and then you can put all types of colors on it. In that case, the hair is going to be deemed higher quality and it's going to cost a little bit more. Um, but sometimes I've come across hair <laughs> no, Siri. Sometimes I come across hair that I try to dye it blonde, the highest blonde, and it turns into a 24, like a goldenish blonde and coming down the, the blonde range. So this hair, function-wise, in terms of its wearability, there may not be anything wrong with the hair, but the fact that it cannot give me the most range of color when I want to redye it, that means that it's lower quality in terms of its coloring characteristics. So there are so many things, so many factors that you can ask, what is the character behind this hair? What does it do? What can it do? What can it not do? And of course you hear people say minimal to no shedding. Um, it doesn't tangle. These are also different qualities. Um, so, Price points, price points do give you a clue in terms of the quality of hair, but you still need to ask these questions because a lot of people just throw numbers on anything. And, you know, scamming is not dead, especially in this industry. So being an informed consumer and knowing what questions to ask because you know what to look for, that helps. And again, test the hair. Even if you don't wear hair, get somebody else to wear it. If you're selling it and you have clients that you know understand hair and can give you some feedback, get that feedback. Get that feedback because um, you're becoming more informed about the, the product, but you, you are also helping the, the industry as well. Living in China, um, in Guangzhou, especially being a wig wearer, being a weave wearer, you know, wearing hair extensions sometimes. I definitely do feel the influence that I have, the effect that I have on a lot of uh, factories and vendors that I, I patron because I'm always telling them I didn't like this hair because of this or this will work better with this or this wig you should put with the black strap inside so that it can tuck. I remember I used to get my wigs from one place um, and I came in to try another wig and I snatched my wig off really quickly because I don't like to use any glue. I just have the black strap in my wig and boom, it fits perfectly and stays in place. So my manufacturer was like, you didn't glue it down? And I was like, no, I showed him my black strap. When I came back the next time, they were custom making all wigs with a black strap. So that piece of advice or just, I really wasn't even giving him advice. I was just telling him what I did. Giving him that tip helped him out. And now he's helping out more and more people, you know, who are buying wigs. You don't have to use glue. So you are really helping the industry, which is helping yourself if you are going to um, patron the hair industry and be a consumer. So it works both ways. 